So we're getting ready to be able to inoculate these freshly sterilized jars of grain uh, to make first generation grain spawn. So let's take a look at some of the agar dishes that we made. Here's the blue oyster mushroom. As you can see, uh, the dish is completely covered in mycelium. Um, and it's, you can see blue oyster mushroom mycelium here. It's a little bit fluffy. Um, it's kind of grows straight up as well as all around the dish and it doesn't take long at all for it to completely uh, consolidate the entire dish. This one's a little bit interesting. You can see the a little bit, I don't know if you can see it there, but it's a little bit orange. And that's not actually contamination. I'm pretty sure what that is, is that's a metabolite and it's just kind of uh, an enzyme, I believe, that the blue oyster mushroom mycelium releases. Maybe if it is trying to fight some contamination or just as it kind of gets older on the di dish, it starts to release um, what we call a metabolite. This is the uh, reishi mushroom mycelium. Uh, reishi grows incredibly fast and incredibly strong. Uh, here's another one. And you can see, looking at the reishi, how uniform it is and how just stark white it is. The other thing too is reishi mycelium is really tough compared to blue oyster, or any oyster for that matter. It's actually even hard to cut through with a scalpel. Now for something completely different, this is some lion's mane uh, mycelium. And you can see there, the lion's mane is obviously a lot slower growing. Um, you can barely see that it's moved throughout the dish at all. And actually lion's mane, when you look at it, it, it grows these little kind of glacier-like formations, but it doesn't grow necessarily just straight out like the other myceliums. It'll kind of, it'll kind of grow straight up off the wedge, and it'll form yeah these little glacier-like formations. And it looks like the lion's mane is pretty much fruiting already on the inside of the dish with these little tiny fruits. And that's kind of how lion's mane will look when it's growing through your spawn as well. It'll be wispy in some areas, and it'll be really strong in other areas. Now here is some king oyster mycelium, and as you can see, it's probably more similar to the blue oyster. Uh, the mycelium is not quite as, as fluffy and non-uniform as the blue oyster, but it, it's not anywhere near the uniform of the reishi. So it's a little bit loose, a little bit fluffy, um, but it is pretty fast growing, although it's not quite as fast as perhaps the blue oyster is in growing or the reishi. Over here we have some yellow oyster. Um, as you can see here, it's also pretty non-uniform, kind of just growing all over the place. I think on this particular dish though, I had a wedge that dropped here and also dropped over here because I pulled it out of a uh, culture slant and didn't get a perfect wedge. So it started growing kind of all over the plate, but you can see that it's kind of wispy in some places and it's, it's kind of strong in other places. So that's your yellow oyster mycelium. Pretty fast growing as well, uh, just about as fast as the, the blue oyster. Here we have some elm oyster mushrooms, so this is just a tree oyster. You can see it's quite a bit slower than the other oyster mushrooms. Um, not entirely sure why that is the reason, but it is growing pretty uniformly. And uh, this one I'm going to probably let grow out a little more before I transfer it. And here we have some shiitake mycelium. So you can see it looks like just kind of one ball right in the middle of the wedge where it's kind of fluffed out. But actually if you look closer at the plate, you can see that it's kind of thin and, and wispy, but it's worked its way almost entirely throughout the plate. So these have only been on agar for about 11 days now, but the, the shiitake has almost worked its way through the plate, um, even though you can't really see it. So shiitake mushroom mycelium will kind of be wispy at first and it will eventually consolidate um, thicker and it actually eventually turns brown if you leave it on the plate long enough. I also just want to show you what happens when it doesn't go so well. This is some wine cap um, mycelium and as you can see nothing much has happened. And what this tells me is that the culture has died. Uh, it either was in the fridge too long or it was subjected to some conditions that it couldn't overtake. Uh, so as you can see it's been like 11 days and there's absolutely no growth whatsoever um, coming off that wedge. And if you look at the rest of the plate, it's completely clean, so we know it's not a necessarily a contamination issue. It was just an issue with potentially a dead culture. 